Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, HO2 in Love, here bringing you your AEW Dynamite review for August 27, 2020. It was a pretty good show last night. Obviously, I don't usually do uh, AEW reviews on Friday, but with the preempted uh, schedule for AEW and NXT due to the NBA playoffs, uh, the last couple weeks have been different. However, next week, uh, the regular schedule of my podcast should resume uh, with uh, NXT being on Tuesday and AEW returning to Wednesday next week. Should be good, but today it's about AEW. So, here I bring you that review. If you're new, like and subscribe. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, and I'll get into the review, shall we? So, as you can tell by the thumbnail, that fans were in attendance. 10% were in attendance uh, last night for AEW. Uh, obviously, it wasn't a full uh, 100% crowd, but 10% people there, uh, we saw f- fans... Have signs. They sang Judas uh, for Chris Jericho, uh, which we haven't heard in five months or so uh, since the pandemic started. But still, uh, fans are fans, and they bring wrong life to the show. And we heard throughout times during matches and during the contract signing between Moxley and MJF. We definitely heard them and it's good to hear that fan interaction those chants again Um, even if it's just 10% obviously with only 10% of the crowd they still shot the same shot for AEW you know where it's uh, viewed of the stage area, but still, nonetheless, it was a good show. Uh, it started with the number one contenders ma- tag team gala match between uh, the top four ranked teams in the tag team division uh, to determine who will face Hangman and Omega uh, at All Out. Uh, so, it was pretty good. Um, uh, we had started Young Bucks and Natural Nightmares. Uh, I mean, for the Natural Nightmares, uh, they did well. Uh, Dustin still looks good at his age. He doesn't look 50 in the ring. The Young Bucks, uh, they did their thing. They won with the BT trigger. Uh, they eliminated the natural nightmares. Then uh, the best friends came and uh, did well. Uh, there was a spot though. Uh, Nick Jackson suplex uh, with a German uh, Trent on the ring apron, which looked cool. Then. Uh, the best friends had their moments. They went for soul food, half and half. They went for a strong zero. It was counted for a two count. Then uh, when uh, the Young Bucks went for Melcher Driver, uh, that uh, Hangman on Page came out of nowhere and grabbed Nick's leg and... Uh, Cost the Young Bucks the chance to advance. And Trent, he rolled up Matt Jackson uh, and eliminated the Young Bucks. And then uh, the, uh, excuse me, FTR came in as fresh as a daisy and picked the bones. And obviously Chuck Taylor, his... uh, Knee was messed up, so they targeted that. Uh, Dax Harwood hit oh, 
an Indian deathlock on Chuck Taylor because of his knee. And Chuck, he tapped out. So there was that. FTR goes to All Out and will face Hangman on page and Kenny Omega. So what happened? Uh, well, I think you could agree that the Young Bucks or FTR should have won this match. Now, it makes sense when you realize the format of the match, why they go Young Bucks, because they're saving the Young Bucks and FTR that match their interactions for a later date. Hopefully when more fans um, are available, whether that's Full Gear, Revolution, uh, sometime uh, down the road, but right decision, FTR goes on to face Hangman Page and Kenny Omega. Now, of course, the story is Kenny Omega. What does he think about Adam Page and costing the Young Bucks and his interactions, obviously, with FTR? So that's interesting to look at. Darby Allen, uh, after a little vignette, shot, showed him riding a skateboard somewhere with Tax still on his back. Um, Darby is crazy. He is the enigma of AEW. So after that, we got confirmation that Casino Battle Royal uh, all out. Darby Allen and Lance Archer will be two of the competitors in this match. And speaking of Lance Archer, also the winner of Casino Battle Royal will get an AW World Tile shot. So that's to mention. Lance Archer, he won in a jobber match. Um, he hit the blackout and the EVD call pre uh, elementary uh, for the win. Um, Archer, well, Jake Roberts, after he cut a promo talking about the other uh, competitors in the uh, Casino Battle Royal, uh, then uh, Taz came out with his posse, uh, and um, we saw a little interaction with Lance Archer and Brian Cage. Which is one of the most intriguing matches now on the uh, for AEW, I would say. The two big guys, the two really athletic big guys going at it. Uh, Darby Allen, he actually uh, attacked Ricky Starks. Uh, and uh, they fought to the back. Well, Taz and Jake Roberts, they separate their main guy, their guys. Uh, Separated and you got some trash talk in between Brian Cage and Lance Archer. Can't wait to see those interact in the Battle Royal. But this is cool. Afterwards, we got a promo for the Thunder Rosa Hokkaido Shida match at All Out. Uh, so, uh, and then afterward, uh, well, Billy Corgan, the president of NWA, JR, Tony Schiavone, and Taz all, were all talking about Thunder Rosa and the match. Um, pretty nice. And then we got a little contract interaction signing between Sheeta and Rosa. Almost got a paper cut. Whoops. But, yeah. Um. Uh, so then after uh, we had the best moment of the show, we had MJF versus John Moxley, the contract signing. Really fun. Uh, MJF, obviously, he came with a walker and 
with a brace around his neck, uh, showing the effects of the paradigm shift. Uh, Moxley came in through the crowd, looked rejuvenated and relieved to see the fans in attendance. Uh, the limited fans, but still good to see. And then uh, Moxley went to the ring. Uh, they ha- he had the contract that was faxed to him by MJF's lawyer. Uh, MJF, geez, he's... First of all, it's good to see fan interactions with MJF, even if they were chanting. Uh, So then, after uh, MJF, he talked about how he thinks Moxley is a one-trick pony. Uh, Talk about the guys he's idolized, like Sandman. And then MJF said... He idolizes actual wrestlers such as Buddy Rogers, such as, um, excuse me, Tony Blanchard, etc. And that on September fifth, he'll be pre, he'll be wearing pre platinum, and how he's a prodigy, and he took a little dig at the end, uh, saying. You know, when you're done, you can tell that little hot wife of yours that I'm single. So, that raw Moxley up a little bit. Uh, MJF, he's a dick, obviously. Uh, so, Moxley, he talked about how, well, he doesn't need one move to be a, a paradigm chef. And it makes him creative. It makes him think of all the ways he can beat MJF. Uh, and that doesn't matter what MJF says. Doesn't matter what Moxley signs. On September 5th, MJF is a dead man. And Moxley, MJF, two of the best promos in the business. Um, uh, so Moxley signed, uh, MJF's crew was all happy, MJF's lawyer was happy, and then Moxley, he looked in good mood, uh, he said, we didn't have to break the table, and that, he said, I'm glad you guys are okay at about what I said, what I put on page 17, and then MJF's to his lawyers, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. there was only 16 pages, Mark, so then, they looked at page 17, and they were like, they were in this shot, um, so, Moxley said, well, you didn't read before you signed, I thought you were a lawyer, so, he announced that next week, on the Gome show, it will be a tune-up match, Moxley versus MJF's lawyer. The paradigm shift will be legal then. Now, if MJF's lawyer doesn't show up, MJF doesn't get his towel shot at all out. So he said to MJF's lawyer, You're going for a ride. You better wear a helmet. And he said, I should be a lawyer. <laughs> Moxley, one of the best. Uh, this interaction between them two was just solid. And the fans chanting just ate up a little bit more. Just made it better. And couldn't ask for anything better. Santana Ortiz, they had a little promo after. Excuse me. Talking about the best friends, talking about the destroying Trent's mom's van. <coughs> Excuse me. And apparently next week we get the guy Santana Ortiz versus the best friends. So it should be interesting. Afterwards, we had pretty much the low point of the show. Um, we had. 
the Butcher, Blade, and the Lucha Brothers versus Griff Garrison, Brian Pillman Jr., Sunny Kiss, and uh, Joey Janela. This was pretty much a squash match. Um, building up on last week, uh, A. Kingston being the peacemaker. Um, so, I mean, assisted po package power driver by the Lucha Brothers for the win. Um, after A. Kingston came out, talked about how there'll be the Casino Battle Royal. Five of them will be in it, and one of them five will win it. So, there was that. Um, I will say, though, Brian Pillman Jr. and Griff Garrison, they're both young. They're both impressive. They obviously need a little more work, but I think they them two can be, because Pill. Brian Pillman Jr. has the name value. So, just a little more work, and I think they can be a big thing down the line. So, afterwards, Dark Order came out with a casket, carrying a, a casket. Evil Uno, he had a microphone. And looked like his mask was a little messed up because it showed him a little being a little happier, or that's what it looked like. So, they pretty much symbolize, per se, that they ended the career of Koei, they ended the career of the Nightmare family. They opened the casket. It was someone, or it was 10 wearing a Nightmare Family jacket. And uh, 10 came out. They put the Nightmare flag on the casket. And they introduced Brody Lee. He came out with the TNT Championship, um, as well as Anna Jay. Um, they basically... It, Formally introduce Anna J into the Nightmare Family, or excuse me, the, the Dark Order. And then we got um, Scorpio Sky, Matt Cardona, and the Nitro Natural Nightmares come out and attack the Dark Order. And apparently, we got an A Man tag team match for All Out. Between Brody Lee and the Dark Order versus Mark Cardona, the Natural Nightmares, and Scorpio Sky. So, should be interesting. Afterwards, uh, the Young Bucks, they confronted Hangman on page, who still hasn't paid Private Party $12 for the Jack Daniels. Uh, about what happened earlier in a bar and they basically uh, told Hangman and Page he's out of the elite so there was that and uh, they broke the mirror on the door and poured out Hangman and Page, he saw the mirror, and he's probably going to have seven years of bad luck. Poor Hangman, but... So, afterwards, uh, we go from that to Big Swole versus Re Reba. I mean, Tony Schiavone was having problems with her name, or it was JR, but... I think it's Reba, and then Penelope Ford uh, with Britt Baker on the outside of the ring, uh, and Kip Sabian versus Big Swole. 
handicap match, apparently a big swell one. She could have any match of her choosing for Sprint Baker. So, this was odd. This was strange. Kind of messy. Um, so, Big Swole won when uh, Reba, she hit Penelope Ford in the face with one of Britt Baker's crutches. And Big Swole pinned Penelope Ford for the win. It's just odd because... She outlasted Penelope Ford, Reba, the antics of Britt Baker, and Kip Sabian on the outside. And, I mean, Big Swole versus Britt Baker uh, is what it is. Uh, it is so and so. But, Next week on the Gum Show, uh, got a pretty sack card. Um, like I said, Santana Ortiz for his best friends. Um, got Chris Jericho for Joey Janela. Kind of strange. Oh, yeah. I mean, see if Orange Cassidy f- factors into that match. We got the Young Buck. We got an eight man tag team match. We got the Young Bucks and Jurassic Express versus SCU and Private Party. And apparently, the winners face each other at All Out. So basically, the winners get a match at All Out. So, for my money, I'm betting on. Young Bucks and Jurassic Express. Although I wouldn't mind seeing Private Party for SCU, but that's good. Then we get to the main event. Uh, Sammy Guevara uh, versus Matt Hardy in a tables match. Um, the story of this was the attack a couple weeks ago by Sammy on Matt. Uh, Busting Matt open with the wrong chair. And they play off that. Well, um, I was a little surprised uh, that we didn't get this match all out. But considering the lineup of all out, um, kind of makes sense that this match is un- not needed. But... Sammy wins, um, so Matt Hardy, he came out, or he went it through a table, tried to elbow drop Sammy through a table, he missed, and he hit a devastating twist of fate uh, on Sammy with Sammy's neck through the chair, and then he went in the ring, uh, got a table that said delete because, well, broken Matt Hardy. He set up the table uh, and looked to do a moonsault, but he played off the fact that, well, it was probably still days uh, from the chair shot or landing on the table. So he got to capitalize. Then Sammy uh, hit a superplex off the top rope to Matt Hardy through the table. Sammy Guevara wins. I mean, it makes sense because uh, Sammy has been dying for a big victory on Dynamite. And this looks to be that. Also, Matt Hardy, of course, he's been flying around. Uh, obviously, he's waiting until Jeff. Uh, his uh, contract expires with WWE next year. 
So obviously he's waiting for his brother to retire, and then they can uh, team together and have one last run as champions uh, in the business. Um, I think this prolongs the feud, and then hopefully we can get Sammy versus Broken Matt. I'm not sure, but this was good for what it was. Afterwards, close the show. Um, Orange Cassie, he ran so fast all on the stage area to Chris Jericho, who is on commentary, and attacked Chris Jericho. And then we got a brawl between them two on the stage to end Dynamite. Um, just craziness to end the show. I'm a little uh, skeptical about it because the brawl kind of took away from Sammy's big victory over Matt. But obviously they're still hyping up the Jericho and Orange Cassie uh, match out out. We'll probably get more clarification of the Mimosa Mayhem match next week on the Gong Show. But next week should be an interesting show. So that was the review for y'all. Um, that was the show basically. was a quality show. Um, obviously next week is Golem Show. Uh, and then before All Out. Uh, Monday I'll have an episode of Sports Overview Topics. Uh Although it's been kind of icy as it comes to sports news lately. Uh, should have an episode up over by Monday. And then, obviously, um, as far as pro wrestling reviews next week, should be back to normal uh, with AW on Thursday and then NXT on reviews on Friday. So... Again, thank you for joining me. Uh, if you're new, like and subscribe. Click that bell for notifications when I'm uploading on the channel. But thank you all. I am Joe 2 Love, and I'll see you all on Monday.